Abnormal weather, Gansa faces sandstorm and flash flood at same time. China's financial crisis is near, from 271, bank branch defaults to elderly bank run. China suspected of weaponizing AI to influence US voters. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Abnormal weather, Gansa faces sandstorm and flash flood at same time. Sandstorms occurred in many places in Gansa province, while there was a report of a flash flood in another place in the province. On September 7, Gansa Meteorological Center announced on its Weibo account that, from the evening to night of September 6, a strong sandstorm happened in Minqing County, Wuhi City, with winds of magnitude 7 to 8 and gusts of 10 to 11. It is the strongest sandstorm in September in Minqing in the past 40 years. So far this year, Minqing has had 13 days of dust storms, the second largest number since 2006 when there were 14 days of such storms. The weather in Wuhi City is very abnormal this year, especially since May. Its temperature has been high. The average temperature in Minqing from May to August this year was 23.3 degrees Celsius, 1.7 degrees Celsius higher than the same period in normal years. It is the highest temperature in the same period since meteorological records began. In fact, it is not just Wuhi City that experiences sandstorms. Videos on mainland social platforms showed that sandstorms occurred in Jiuquan City, Zhangya City, Jingchang City and other places in Gansu Province on September 6. And on the same day, a flash flood occurred in Xia County, Gannan Prefecture, Gansu Province. The China Central Television News, CCTV, reported on September 7 that there was a short heavy rain in some areas of Xia County on the night of September 6. Flash floods of varying degrees occurred in Guining Village, Wangeltang Town, Madong Town, and other places. As of 8.30 a.m. on September 7, at least seven people were missing and three others were injured. It is worth noting that Gansu and other northwest regions in China have been experiencing drought since June. On September 5, the China Meteorological Administration stated at a regular press conference that there are currently moderate to severe droughts in northeastern Xinjiang, northeastern Qinghai, central and western Gansu, central and southern Ningxia, northern Shangxi, and central and western Inner Mongolia. Among them, the central region of Gansu is experiencing a severe drought. In Gansu Province, the Bayan City Meteorological Observatory issued a warning on September 5, saying severe meteorological droughts have occurred in Jingtai County, Bayan District, Jingyuan County, Pingchuan District and the central and northern parts of Huaining County in Bayan City. It is forecast that severe droughts will continue in these places in the next week. The Gansu Provincial Emergency Management Department stated that, as of August 25, more than 902,000 people in 31 counties and 10 cities in the province were affected by the droughts, in addition to 2.9 million acres of crops. In Inner Mongolia, Chinese media reported on August 30 that more than 26,000 people faced a temporary shortage of drinking water. China's financial crisis is near, from 271, bank branch defaults to elderly bank run. The mid-year reports of China's A-share listed banks on August 31 showed that the net interest margins of Chinese banks have continued to decline in recent years. In July this year, the number of defaults on commercial bills by Chinese banks surged, and Chinese people's confidence in bank deposits also dropped unprecedentedly. Some political and economic figures said that China's financial crisis is about to come. According to the July 2023 Commercial Bill Default Data Form released by the Shanghai Commercial Paper Exchange in August, as of July 31, a total of 2,851 commercial bill acceptors had defaulted, an increase of about 80% from 1,554 in January. Among the defaulters of commercial bills, 271 were branches of state-owned banks and branches of local urban and rural commercial banks, city commercial banks, rural commercial banks. Within one month, the number of defaults increased by 239 from 33 in June, a month-on-month -month increase of 356%. Of the 271 bank branches that defaulted on their bills, the five largest state-owned banks Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, Agricultural Bank of China, Bank of China, 
China Construction Bank and Postal Savings Bank accounted for 167. The remaining 104 are mostly urban and rural commercial banks that are at risk of bankruptcy, and there are also individual joint stock banks and branches of foreign banks. The state-owned banks of the Chinese Communist Party are large state-owned banks directly controlled by the Chinese government and represent the strongest financial capital in China. Among them, the four old national banks refer to the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, Agricultural Bank of China, Bank of China and China Construction Bank. Now the names of these banks all appear on the overdue list of acceptors. The acceptor's breach of contract means that the acceptor cannot fulfill the obligation on the note on time, that is, the cash corresponding to the note cannot be paid on time. The overdue acceptor announced by the Shanghai Commercial Paper Exchange refers to an acceptor whose bills are overdue three or more times and have an overdue balance at the end of the month or have overdue bills during the month. The Shanghai Commercial Paper Exchange is a commercial paper exchange promoted by the Central Bank of China, People's Bank of China, which releases data on commercial paper defaults every month. Because the central bank does not publish the non-performing ratio of commercial banks on a monthly basis, the commercial paper default data of the Shanghai Commercial Paper Exchange has become an important window for people to observe credit risks. The Shanghai Ticket Exchange began publishing bank acceptance bills from January 2023. Most of this year's notes have maturities of six months. Before July, the number of overdue bank notes announced by the Shanghai Ticket Exchange was very small. After July, 271 bank commercial bill default records appeared in a concentrated manner, showing that China's credit risk has spread from real estate and investment and financing platforms to the banking system. Who would have thought that even a bank's commercial note could be breached? Note that all this is just the beginning. Bank revenue woes exacerbate financial risks. Net interest margin is regarded as the lifeline of banks. The higher the net interest margin, the higher the net interest income, and net interest income accounts for 60% to 70% of the bank's total revenue. The narrowing of net interest margins of Chinese banks has become a fact and has directly affected bank revenue. On August 31, the mid-year reports of China's A-share listed banks were released. Statistics show that among the 42 listed banks, 20 have net interest margins below the 1.8% warning line. In the first half of this year, the overall interest margin of China's state-owned banks fell the most, with an average net interest margin of 1.71%. The data also shows that banks' net interest income is bleak and has entered a crisis state below the warning line. This situation is consistent with the sudden increase in the number of defaults on bank commercial bills. From September 2022 to now, mainland China banks have lowered bank benchmark interest rates five times in a row. Since the beginning of this year, following the interest rate cut in June, interest rates were cut again on August 15. The decrease was the largest since 2020, mainly targeting time deposits and certificates of deposit. Starting from September 1, 18 banks, including commercial banks, once again lowered their deposit interest rates. These eager interest rate cuts show that the Chinese Communist Party authorities have repeatedly lowered interest rates to reduce funding costs. It also shows that the authorities' interest rate cuts have had little effect in stimulating consumption. Bank depositors, who can you trust? In recent years, China's real estate giants have experienced frequent explosions. Local banks have gone bankrupt. Not long ago, Zhongrong Trust, which was favored by high net worth individuals, suspended redemptions without warning. The credit risks of China's financial sector have repeatedly undermined people's confidence in investment and financial management. People are more willing to choose bank deposits, which are relatively safe and sound, but confidence in banks has dropped as never before. Wang Nan, pseudonym, a Shenzhen citizen, said on August 23, even our deposits have to be divided among the four major state-owned banks. Each bank does not exceed 499,000 yuan, and other banks have to stand aside. The remaining money is used to buy gold bars and put them under the bed at home. Who can you trust? This is a credit crash. After all the Zhongrong Trust financial products that Wang Nan invested 11 million yuan in were suspended, she and 150,000 other investors returned to poverty overnight and became the target of official stability control. 
she also said that the consensus among investors in the group is that they no longer trust any financial institutions from the government and will no longer buy products from any financial institutions, including bank financial management. Recently, some financial professionals have reminded people on social media that the deposit in a bank should not exceed 500,000 yuan. If you have a lot of cash, it is better to spread it across different banks. If you have a deposit of 500,000 in hand, you should deposit it in several banks separately, so as to ensure the safety of the deposit as much as possible. According to the current deposit insurance law, if a depositor's deposit principal plus interest in the same insured bank is within 500,000, full repayment will be implemented. For deposits exceeding 500,000 yuan, depositors will bear certain risks and possibilities of loss. A bank staff member in Guangdong anonymously posted an article online, Bankers tell you that you must remember these four points when depositing fixed-term deposits in banks. Many people have already suffered losses. The article reminded people who go to banks to deposit fixed-term deposits how to avoid stepping into traps inside. It recommends, when depositing large-time deposits, be sure to use deposit receipts or passbooks instead of bank cards, when depositing money in a bank, never automatically transfer it, etc. Elderly Bank Run queuing up to withdraw money at the bank. The elderly are the main bank depositors in China. Recently, long lines of elderly people have appeared in front of banks in Guangdong and other places to withdraw money. The internet is also hotly discussing the fact that old people would rather give up the interest provided by the bank and go to the bank to withdraw money in person. Some comments said that the elderly people are going to banks to withdraw money, which shows that they are worried about financial risks, feel unsafe about depositing money in banks, and are afraid that their deposits will be frozen or lost. A Twitter account with the same name as Luo Xiang, a professor of criminal law at China University of Political Science and Law, recently retweeted a video of an elderly person making a run on their money, with the text saying that major banks in China are being run by the elderly. The reason is that in order to misappropriate personal deposits, the bank requires the elderly to be present in person when withdrawing money and creates all kinds of outrageous difficulties. Netizenian commented, My father's money was deposited in the bank before his death and I still can't withdraw it. There have been reports in the news that banks did not allow family members to withdraw money after an old man passed away. Some children were forced to carry a paralyzed old man to the bank to withdraw money. A 94-year-old man was even carried into a bank for facial recognition. These live cases are making more and more elderly people and their families feel uneasy. Liao Shiming, a Hong Kong political and economic commentator living in the United States, said on September 5, a very important reason for the surge of elderly people queuing up to withdraw money is the simple and crude practices of banks. If the elderly are seriously ill and unable to move or pass away, then the large amount of money can hardly be taken out, so they are all withdrawing money now. This will have a great impact on China's banks. Because everyone has withdrawn money, there will be less money in the bank pool, which will easily lead to the risk of liquidity for banks and even trigger a banking crisis, which will definitely have an impact on the Chinese economy. From the recent default of more than 270 bank bills to the elderly people who do not trust banks and go to make bank withdrawals, these aspects together indicate that the financial crisis in Chinese society is about to begin. China suspected of weaponizing AI to influence U.S. voters As the United States is preparing for the 2024 presidential election, Microsoft has released a report claiming that China is suspected of using artificial intelligence on social media to sway U.S. voters. On September 7, Microsoft said that its researchers have found a network of fake, Chinese-controlled social media accounts that they believe is seeking to influence the U.S. election. According to the Microsoft Threat Analysis Center, China has honed a new capability in the past year to automatically generate images it can use for influence operations meant to mimic U.S. voters across the political spectrum and create controversy along racial, economic, and ideological lines. Powered by artificial intelligence, these images can not only create compelling images but also learn to improve them over time. This capability can help create high-quality content that could go viral across social networks in the U.S. and other democracies. 
The screenshots in the researchers' report showed the social media platforms affected appeared to be Facebook and Twitter. The researchers said they have observed China-affiliated actors leveraging AI-generated visual media in a broad campaign that largely focuses on politically divisive topics, such as gun violence, and denigrating U.S. political figures and symbols. The researchers said that the suspected Chinese information campaign bore similarities to activity which the U.S. Department of Justice has attributed to an elite group within China's Ministry of Public Security. According to Reuters, the report highlights a fraught social media environment as the United States is preparing for the presidential election next year. The U.S. government has accused Russia of meddling in its 2016 presidential election with a covert social media campaign and has warned of subsequent efforts by China, Russia, and Iran to influence voters. A Microsoft representative said that its researchers used a multifaceted attribution model, which relies on technical evidence, behavioral evidence, and contextual evidence. They found that China's campaign began using generative artificial intelligence technology in about March 2023 to create politically charged content in English and mimic U.S. voters. Microsoft revealed that China's identified accounts had attempted to appear American by listing their public location as within the United States, posting American political slogans, and sharing hashtags relating to domestic political issues. Microsoft said that multiple Chinese state-affiliated threat actors and their cyber operations have targeted the U.S. defense industry and U.S. infrastructure, looking for competitive advantages to bolster strategic military aims. They also focused on cyber attacks in the South China Sea region, conducting intelligence collection and malware execution against regional governments and industries. Microsoft said that they found a China-based threat actor called Storm0558 accessed Microsoft customer email accounts of about 25 organizations, including U.S. and European government entities, in May 2023. This activity, according to Microsoft, was likely conducted for China's espionage purposes, but it has successfully blocked this campaign. Microsoft's new report also details how China has continued its global efforts to spread state-sponsored propaganda and soften the country's image abroad. Accordingly, the Chinese government is investing resources and messaging to audiences in more languages, on more platforms, while evolving its techniques. For example, China was found employing more than 230 state media employees and affiliates who masquerade as independent social media influencers across all major Western social media platforms. Those influencers are recruited, trained, promoted, and funded by China Radio International, CRI, and other Chinese state media outfits. They expertly spread localized CCP propaganda that achieves meaningful engagement with at least 103 million audiences around the world across multiple platforms. According to Reuters, a Chinese embassy spokesperson in Washington said that Microsoft's accusations of China using artificial intelligence to create fake social media accounts were full of prejudice and malicious speculation. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.